Hi, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Don't forget, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject mathematics and the year 2016. So, you have to just stay with us because we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and please note in this particular segment we are solving questions 31 to 50. So right now we are solving question 31. The mean of 2 minus t, 4 plus t, 3 minus 2t, 2, 2 plus t and t minus 1 is what? Okay so all you just have to do in solving for mean you are going to add up all of these values okay and find their average so how many are they one two three four five okay so let's add them up so the mean will be we equals two minus t okay plus four plus t okay let's be careful of the signs and the letter t okay we have plus three minus two t we have plus 2 plus t okay then we have plus t minus 1 okay so we counted 1 2 3 4 5 over 5 so let's collect like terms okay we have 2 plus 4 that is 6 plus 3 that is 9 plus 2 that is 11 okay minus 1 that is 10 Plus 10 over okay we have minus t plus t that is 0 okay we have minus 2t plus t that is minus t okay then minus t plus t that is 0 so we have no t left over the average that is 5 okay 5 year 1 5 year 2 so the mean we are looking for is 2 so join me as we go back to the screen and select the right option You can see that option A carries the value 2, so option A is the correct option. Question 32. Evaluate 12.02 times 20.06 over 26.04 multiply 60.06. .06. Correct to three significant figures. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard and provide solutions to this question. So at first, we can bring all of these to standard form, okay? So this, if we are to remove the decimal points, we just have two numbers after the decimal point. So that will be 12, 0, 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 2, okay? Then we have multiplies 20, 0, 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 over 26, 0, 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 just two numbers after the decimal point times 606 times okay 10 raised to power minus 2 okay so all we just have to do this is minus 2 minus 2 this makes minus 4 so we would have 201202 0, okay times 2006 very funny right over 2604 times 6006, all right, times 10 raised to power. This is minus 2 minus 2. This gives you minus 4. Okay, this is also minus 2 minus 2. This is 10 raised to power minus 4. Okay, so this is also minus. Divide means minus. So it will be minus into brackets. This is minus 4, right? Into brackets, minus 4. So when we divide this, we are going to get 0 0.154 okay, times 10 raised to power. Minus times minus, that is plus. So we have minus 4 plus 4. This gives you 0. So this is 0 0.154 times 10 raised to power 0. 10 raised to power 0 is 1. So 1 times this still gives us this, 0 0.154. Okay, so there are different approaches to solving this question, but this is 
good so we have 0.154 let's go back to the screen and select the right option so look through the options you will see that option b is the correct option question 33 if y equals 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 6x plus 1 then find the y dx okay so you agree with me that this is a question on differentiation okay so this is the question we have here so we differentiate this remember in differentiation the rule is very simple okay so if we have x raised to the power n by the time we are differentiating is that will give you n here that multiplies this x okay then we still have this all right so the n here is 3 so this will be 3 times 2 okay that will be 6x raised to power 3 minus 1 okay we have plus 2 times 6 that is 12x then 2 minus 1 okay when we differentiate this, this is 1x raised to power 1 so 1 times 6 that is still 6 okay x raised to power 1 minus 1 then differentiating this this automatically you know it's 0 okay so 3 minus 1 that is 2 so we have 6x squared plus 2 minus 1 that is 1 x raised to the power 1 is still x so we have 12x plus 1 minus 1 that is 0 x raised to the power 0 that is 1 okay so 1 times 6 that is 6 so if we differentiate this this is what we are going to have so 6x squared plus 12x plus 6. So join me as we go back to the screen and point out the correct option. 6x squared plus 12x, all right? Then we have plus 6. 6x squared plus 12x plus 6. You can see that in option D. Option D is very correct. Question 34. The hand term of the sequence 3, 9, 27, 81 is what? So before we head for our whiteboard, okay, you can see that the first term is 3, that is A equals 3, okay. The common ratio, how, just divide this, okay, using this. So 9 divided by 3, that is 3. To press for that, 27 divided by 9, that is 3. It's 1 divided by 27, that is 3. You can see that the common ratio is 3 and the first term is 3. So how do we find the end term this is just all we have to do okay so your end term will be equals to okay a r n minus one okay so we've gotten our first term a as three times the common ratio is still three raised to the power n minus one so that is our end term okay so if the end term has been stated to be having three that'll be three minus one that is two if the end term has been stated to be five that is five minus one that is four okay so this is the end term three times three raised to the power n minus one so let's go back to the screen and point out the correct option three times three raised to the power n minus one option b is very correct question 35 Simplify 1 minus, you open bracket, 1 over 7 times 3 or number 1 over 2 divides 3 over 4. Okay, so don't forget the simple rule of board mass. Okay, bracket order, that order can imply for indices, integers, and what have you. Then you have division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So let's use board mass to tackle this question. So remember, brackets. Okay, so in the bracket we have... 1 over 7 times 3 times 2, converting this to improper fraction. 3 times 2, that is 6, plus 1, that is 7. So that gives you 7 over 2. 7 strikes, 7, that's 1, okay? So basically, I have 1 times 1, that is 1. 1 times 2, I have 2. Divide 3 over 4, okay? 1 minus, so I still have 1 minus. This is 1 over 2, okay? 1 times 1, 1, 1 times 2. 2 divided by 3 over 4 okay when we switch this divide to times this comes up this go down this goes down rather so we have times 4 over 3 okay 2 year 1 2 year 2 okay so i have 1 minus 1 times 2 we have 2 1 times 3 we have 3 
okay so looking at this 1 minus 2 over 3 if you find the LCM the LCM is 3 okay 3 1 that's 3 3 times 1 we have 3 minus 3 in 3 that is 1 1 times 2 we have 2 okay so 3 minus 2 we have 1 over 3 so that's your answer 1 third or 1 over 3 so join me as we go back to the screen and pick out the correct option so you can see as well that option b is very correct don't forget that you should click on the link in the description below okay it takes you to the my school website where you can download the my school mobile app or get the my school software for just a token of 1000 error remember that this will enable you to have a simulated jam cbt exam experience which is very vital for your success okay especially in your coming jam exam so join me as we tackle question 36 if a car travels 120 kilometers on 45 liters of petrol how many petrol is need how much petrol rather is needed for a journey of 600 kilometers so you can see that is very easy to solve 120 kilometers okay you born petrol or 45 liters so 600 kilometer because how much quantity of petrol or fuel when you cross multiply we have x times 120 equals 600 times 45 dividing both sides by 120 rather okay so that we can have clarity 120 Okay, 12 year 1, 12 year 5. Okay, so we have x equals 5 times 45. So you may ask, what is 5 times 45? That is 2 to 5. Probably for some of us, without calculators. Okay, 5 times 5, we have 25. You write 5, you lift 2. 5 times 4, 20 plus 2 that is 22 2 to 5 so for 600 kilometer you need 225 liters of petrol so join me let's go back to the screen and pick out the correct option so we see option c 2 to 5 liters is the correct option please don't forget to hit the like button always click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video 37. Find the y dx if y equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay, so let's solve this question. And I believe you know that this is a question on differentiation. Okay, it may also be helpful that you go further using your textbooks to read more on differentiation, integration, and what have you, calculus. In general so we have this is a question here so when we differentiate this that will be 3 times 3 that is 9 9 x raised to the power 3 minus 1 okay plus 2 times 2 that is 4 x raised to the power 2 minus 1 plus 1 times 3 that is 3 x raised to the power 1 minus 1 differentiating this that gives you 0 okay so 3 minus 1 we have 2 9x squared okay plus 2 minus 1 we have 1 so 1 x raised to the power 1 is still x so what we have is 4x plus 1 minus 1 that is 0 x raised to the power 0 that is 1 1 times 3 we have 3 so the y dx of this is this 9x squared plus 4x plus 3 we have to go back to the screen and pick out the correct option 9x squared plus 4x plus 3. Option A is the correct option. Question 38. Evaluate. We have sine x minus 5x squared. So this is integration. Okay. So um, remember if we integrate sine x, it's going to give us minus cos x. So readily look through all the options. Which of the options um, has minus cos x so we have option a and option c so those are the two options we are looking at every other options they become invalid okay so we are looking at option a and option c so by the time we integrate this in integration this will be 2 plus 1 that is 3 
that same three here will bring it underneath here okay so i'm going to have 5x raised to the power 3 over 3. so in total we'll have minus cos x okay minus 5x raised to the power 3 over 3. so the correct option is option c option a is minus 10x which is incorrect in integration so option c is very correct question 39 if n equals p over 2 open bracket t1 minus t2 over t1 find p when n equals 12 t1 equals 27 and t2 equals 24 so i just um, replicated the question on our whiteboard this is the question we have here and this our, give, our given data okay so let's make it count so we'd have when we cross multiply this now this comes here so i'm going to have 2n equals p into brackets all right big brackets rather because we have numerator and denominator in the brackets so we have t1 what's our t1 that is 27 t2 that is 24 okay over 27 we can see that right so this is 27 minus 24 that is 3 over 27 so we have 2n equals p into brackets 3 over 27 this is still 3 year 1 this is still 9 so this means we are having 1 over 9 so let's just save time so we have p into brackets 1 over 9 or p times 1 over 9 isn't it p times 1 that is still p so we have p over 9 2n equals p over 9 so by the time we cross multiply and we are given n as 12 already so 2 times 12 that is 24 simple right so we are going to have p equals 24 times 9 our usual way we have 24 times 9 okay 9 times 4 36 we write 6 we lift 3 9 times 2 that is 18 plus 3 that is 21 okay so that means p equals 2 1 6 so we have to go back to the screen okay so we can see that p is 2 1 6 option d number 40 so for x and y respectively this simultaneous equation 3x minus 5y equals 9 and 6x minus 4y equals 12 so solving simultaneous equation we can use different methods you know okay we can use substitution method we can use elimination method sometimes we can even um, use graphical solution to solve it so right now i, I decide to use the elimination method okay so the coefficient of x here is 6 the coefficient here is 3 isn't it so we just use it to multiply so that we can eliminate x from the start so we have this will be times 6 everything here times 6 okay then everything we have here times 3 so let's do this simple operation together 6 times 3x that is 18x all right minus 6 times minus 5y that is minus 30y equals 6 times 9 okay that gives us 54 so we have 3 times 6x that is 18x okay so we have 3 times this this is minus 12y equals 3 times 12 that is 36 all right so let's eliminate this this is minus times plus this is minus minus times minus we have plus okay minus times plus we have minus so this is 18x minus 18x this is zero x is gone eliminated we have minus 30y plus 12y that gives you minus 18y equals 54 minus 36 okay that gives you 18 all right dividing both sides by the coefficient of y which is minus 18 so we can see that y 
equals minus 1. So let's impute or substitute y for minus 1 in any of the equations. Okay, so I can decide to use this equation or this, anyone. So we can have something like this. Let me pick one. So we have 3x minus 5 into brackets minus 1 equals 9. Okay, so we have 3x plus 5 equals 9. 3x equals 9 minus 5. Crossing over, it becomes negative. Okay, then we have 3x equals 4. Dividing both sides by 3. So we'd have x equals 4 over 3. And y equals minus 1. So we've solved for x and y respectively. x is 4 over 3 and y is minus 1. So join me as we go back to our screen and point out the correct option. x equals 4 over 3 and y equals minus 1. Option D is the correct option. Question 41. If Q is a factor of 18 and T is prime numbers between 2 and 18, what is Q intersection T? Okay, um, this is a topic of um, on set theory. Okay, set theory topic. So I just interpreted the question here for us. So we are told Q is a factor of 18. So what are the factors of 18? They are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. That is numbers you can multiply together that can give you 18. For instance, 18 times 1 gives us 18. 2 times 9 gives us 18. 3 times 6 gives us 18. Okay? Then we have um, T. T is being identified as prime numbers between 2 and 18. Remember prime numbers that they are just numbers that the only way you can get them is themselves and 1. Okay, you have to multiply 1 by that number itself. For instance, 7. The only way you can get 7 is when you multiply 7 times 1, not 5 times 2. Okay, so we have to identify the prime numbers okay between 2 and 18 remember 1 is not a prime number because the only factor of 1 is still 1 so a prime number just um we have two factors okay itself and 1 so 1 is just a factor of itself so it's not a prime number so i'm just trying to give that as a background knowledge okay so the question um, requires prime numbers, prime numbers between 2 and 18 rather Okay, so we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17. So we are told that we should find Q intersection T. So that is, what are the elements that you can find in Q and that are also present in T? Okay, at first we can identify 2. Okay, what else? We have 3. What else? We don't have 6, we don't have 9, we don't have 18. So we just have 2 and 3. So Q intersection C is 2 and 3. So let's go back and select the correct option. 2, comma 3. Option A is very correct. 42. From the cyclic quadrilateral, find T, S, V. Okay, so remember there are some theorems we shared about um, cyclic quadrilateral at first you can see that all of its vertices they are touching some point on the circumference of the circle okay then you should also know that um, exterior um, angle is equal to the opposite interior angle okay and two opposite angles inside the interior angles that are opposite to each other that kind of pair they are equals to 180 degrees so if we have here the first one i quoted which is the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle so if what we have here is 100 definitely all of you should be 100 okay so that is this place is not just 80 the remaining angle left here is 20 so 80 plus 20 that is 100 so we have 100 here we have 100 here okay so we are now asked to find c s v okay so already we know here is 100 so what is going to be here all right so that's very easy you just say 100 you just say 180 remember that two uh, opposite interior angles are equal to 180 so if here is 100 and this is the opposite that will be 100 that will be 180 minus the 100 here and that gives you 80 okay or if you want to use another method tsv remember this is angle on a straight line whatever is left here 
is still 80. Okay, so this solves the question. The correct option here is option B. Question 43. Find the mean of 10, 8, 5, 11, 12, 9, 6, 3, 15, and 23. Okay, you just have to add up all of these numbers and find over their quantity. Okay, how many are they? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now let's add up. This is 18, 23, 34, 46, 55, 61, 64, 79, 102. Okay, that gives you 10.2. So the mean is 10.2. Let's go back and select the correct option. So we can see option C, 10.2 is the correct option. Question 44. In the cyclic quadrilateral above, find PRO. So remember, cyclic quadrilateral, we've talked about this uh, quite uh, some time today, so many times today. So we have. Um, Remember the angle that is here is equal to angle that is here. When you add it up to the angle that is here, it should give you 180. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard and bring out solution to this question. Okay, so remember I said the angle here plus the angle here equals to 180. So that is we are saying angle O, all right, plus angle Q equals 180 degrees. Okay, so Angle O is 110 plus angle Q, it is 50 plus unknown. Let's say A equals 180. All right, so 110 plus 150 plus 50, rather, that's 160. So A equals to 180 minus 160. A equals 20. All right, so we can see that the angle here is 20 degrees. Okay, do we see that now? So that is the first step. The next step we are going to take, just follow this video clip, you can play it back, okay? You can see this is like a right angle triangle, this is like a right angle triangle, okay? This is 90, this is also 90. So for this um, triangle here, you can see it, this triangle here, this particular one, you can see we have 90 already. So 90 plus 50, that is 140. 180 minus 140, that tells you that this place is 40 degrees do you see that now okay so for this side too we have 90 plus 20 okay that is 110 110 minus 180 that is 70 70 degrees okay so when we we'll make this a right angle we'll make this a right angle okay so don't forget that the angle here all right is equal to the angle here so that means here too is 50 just as this is 50 you can see all right so we can see that um angle p is 120 in total angle p plus angle r should give you 180 those are part of the rules or the laws of cyclic um, quadrilateral so we already know angle p as 120 plus angle r is 40 plus y degrees equals to 180 120 plus 140 that is 160 so y equals 180 minus 160 so y equals 20 degrees okay so that's the same 20 that i applied here okay so the angle p r o angle r is actually 20 degrees for this triangle but for the whole angle here we know that r, y is uh, sorry r equals to 60 for the whole angle there but for y that we have to look for or in the angle p r o we can see that y is actually 20 just for here this triangle so let's confirm if the answer we have 20 degrees is correct we can see opposite angles okay in quadrilateral cyclic quadrilateral they should be equals to 180. 20 plus 40, that is 60. This is 
120, right? 60 plus 120, that gives you 180. So, angle PRO is what? 20 degrees. But the entire angle of R, 40 plus 20, is 60 degrees. So, going back to the context of the question, angle PRO is 20 or angle Y is 20. So, let's go back to the screen and select the correct option. So, we can see option B for 20 degrees is the correct option. 45, uh, Ogive is constructed using what? An Ogive graph, you know, it looks like S. Okay, so this is how you construct an Ogive graph. You use cumulative frequency, your vertical axis, then upper class limit, that is for your horizontal axis. So, option C, cumulative frequency table is the correct option. Please don't forget that we have several solution providers waiting to help you out on the My School website. So how do you ask your questions right now? You just click on the link in the description below. It will take you to the My School website where you meet our solution providers. So right now we are tackling question 46. Rationalize root 6 minus root 4 over root 6 plus root 4. This is a question on salt. Okay. So, what we are asked to do, we are going to rationalize. So, how do you rationalize? You just take the, what makes this a conjugate, okay? The, if this is positive, you just apply the negative here. Let me show you what I mean. So, this will be multiplies root 6 minus root 4 over root 6 minus root 4, okay? What makes this a conjugate? just the negative sign of it okay that's just or use it to multiply the numerator and denominator okay. so what do we have here root 6 times root 6 that is root 36 so square root of 36 that is 6 all right so we have root 6 times minus root 4 that is minus root 24 okay minus root 4 times root 6 that is minus root 24 all right so minus times minus we have plus root 4 times root 4 that is root 16 root 16 you see the same thing as 4 okay so we have root 6 times root 6 that is root 36 okay root 36 is still the same thing as 6 square root of 36 that is 6 root 6 times minus root 4 that is minus root 24 plus root 4 times root 6 that gives us plus root 24 okay then we have plus times minus we have minus root 4 times root 4 that is root 16 square root of 16 that is 4 okay so minus 24 strikes out minus root 24 strikes out plus root 24 so what do we have left we have 6 plus 4 we have 10 okay minus root 24 minus root 24 that is minus 2 root 24 okay don't try to sum the content right so we have 6 minus 4 we have 2 okay so that's the implies 10 minus so if we even try to eliminate this 2 what we can still have we can have this 2 is common right you can have 2 into brackets 5 minus root 24 isn't it over 2 because 2 times 5 10 2 times minus root 24 give us minus 2 root 24. 2 strikes out 2. So I have 5 minus root 24. Don't forget that if you try to break root 24 down, what you are going to have is 2 root 6. Okay, 2 root 6. Isn't it? So we are bringing it to its basic form. This is a single form. This is the basic form. How do I know that 2 root 6 gives us 24? 2 times 6, that is 12. 12 times 2, root 24. So our answer is 5 minus 2 root 6. Let's go to the screen and select the correct option. 
5 minus 2 root 6. We can see option D. Option D is the correct option. In case you have better steps, solutions or explanations to any of the questions we have solved so far, kindly use the comment section below. Indicate that question number and the steps you'd like to share. 47. The bar, the bar chart above shows the marks obtained by students in a mathematics test. Okay? How many students in all took the test? You just have to use the height that we can see here to sort out the total number of students that part took in that test. So, we have the first height measures to 3. Okay, the next that is 2 making 5 plus 5 that is 10 plus 4 that is 14 plus 6 20 plus 10 30 plus 4 34 plus 3 37 plus 1 38 plus 2 40 so the total number of students that took the test is 40 students option a question 48 determine the mean score of the students that took the mathematics test so at first how do you find the number of students that actually wrote um, the math test just use this height you add up this height together that's three plus two plus five plus like that so you should have a sum of 40 okay then how do we now get um the, the the numerator the values in the numerator okay just say the first height measures three right on where zero that will be three times zero okay the next height as well we are going to have it times one okay the next height is five times two that is what we'll be adding up okay and that's what's going to give us our mean so let's go to the whiteboard so already in the on the whiteboard i've mean an arrangement for us okay like i mentioned using the height please you can always flash back to the diagram okay you can pause the video clip so you can see three times zero plus one times two plus five times two plus five times three okay then we have over the number of students that partake in the test okay so that took the test so we have this 40 so when we multiply this in the bracket we have three times zero we have zero one times two two five times two ten okay five times three fifteen five times four twenty ten times five fifty four times six twenty four three times seven twenty one eight multiplies one that is eight then two times nine that is eighteen by the time we sum up what we have at the numerator we have one sixty eight over their total number which is 40 and that gives us 4.2 just have to go back to the screen and pick out 4.2 so we see option c is the correct option number 49 from the diagram above find the fraction of the shaded position or you can simply put portion whichever works for you so you can see here we have a triangle being formed here all right and you're going to observe 90 degrees already being made available around this side okay so that's 90 plus 60 okay that gives you 150 and some of angle in a triangle like this is 180 so 180 minus 150 that is 30 so what we have here is 30 degrees what we have here is 30 degrees so we have two 30 degrees that is 60 degrees circumference of a circle that is 360 so 60 divided by 360 that is 1 over 6 so the fraction of the shaded position or portion is 1 over 6 option d question 50 from the diagram above find the required roots or region of x okay that is at the point where y equals 0 at this point y is not equals to 0 okay so you can either call this root can call it solutions you can call it zeros okay so we can see that at this line y is zero okay so when y is zero x is minus one and x is also four okay so the best expression will be minus one is lesser than or equals to x x is less than or equals to four plus four or four so the correct option is option c 
We've come to the end of the segment that contain the solution for the JAM 2016 past question for the subject in mathematics. But of course, you know, there are more video clips to come on other subjects and for the same year. Please, all you just have to do is to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next videos just for you.